Good evening, George Bruno here, also known as the Sultan of Silver. I want to welcome you to another episode of Beards Without Borders. Brought to you by Burt's Bees, beeswax chapstick. What else we got going tonight? El Dorado Rum. One shot, sip it for an hour. 21 years aged. Magnificent. Spiderco knives. I find them to be the best. I, I love Spiderco. An acid cigar tonight. This one's called a wafer, and you'll see why in just a minute. It's thin, like a stick of gum, but the smell is heavenly. I like taking off the band of this one here because it's so huge. Magnifico. Get rid of this. This is what happens when you don't wear glasses. Basically what I do is I just take the knife and I put a slit in the end. Like that. Oh my god, that is, it, it just tastes wonderful. Not really into the infused cigars, but if, you, if, how would the most interesting man in the world say it? I don't smoke infused cigars often, but when I do, I smoke acid cigars. And I got a pipe tonight, a couple different tobaccos. Uh, an English blend and an aromatic blend, I will decide which ones I want to smoke when I get to it. You get to a certain point in life where it's just when you get around to it. During the day, I am so focused. You know, uh, my energy level now is different than it is during the rise and shine segments. I couldn't say, I couldn't scream that, scream that out now if I tried. Zippo lighter. Some people try to give me comments on what's the best lighter to use. I appreciate all the comments. Whatever my hand grabs, whether it be a Bic, a torch, a, a butane torch, a Zippo. I like a vintage Zippo. But, and this one's also a pipe one. You can see the uh, hole. See that? That's kind of fun. Here's the beards, man. All right, little El Dorado, 21 years. Oh. It's like it's like having a butterscotch candy that you swish around in your mouth. Mm. Beautiful, absolutely beautiful. In the backyard, birds chirping, blue jays going wild, because I'm right next to the uh, my bird bath. It's funny, and the uh, I can hear traffic from. I live near some pretty hefty highways. Just I'm four miles outside of Philadelphia, so I'm always hearing traffic. So I like shooting with green in the background. It makes me feel like I'm in the woods. Oh, this is... It's beautiful. It really is. <laughs> Always have a glass of water, too. Always. The smoke with these is really rich. I'm a puffer, not an inhaler. Although my doctor 
would still advise me against it. I see her tomorrow morning. I haven't been to a doctor in 10 years and I just got back a couple weeks ago. Had some pretty poor numbers, so I'm working on it. I'm gonna be the incredible shrinking man. I have to lose a lot of weight. I used to be 260 pounds. I'll show you some pictures sometime. I was always kind of a husky football player type. Always big, heavy. I even felt heavy. And then I dropped down to under 200. Not dieting, just being healthy. And still it's not enough. And I gotta change uh, my eating habits as well. So my goal is to get down to maybe like 185. I'm five foot eleven. To go from being built like a linebacker to a a ballet dancer, well, not quite ballet, a yoga instructor. How's that sound? Ballet, was a poor choice of words. To a yoga instructor, that's. I would much rather be flexible than than strong or big. For me, as I get older, what's important to me is, uh, I would say the most important thing to me is flexibility. That's, my flexibility helps me when I get out of bed, helps me when I have to move things around the house, helps me walk up and down the stairs, helps me stay agile as I'm cutting hair. So give me flexibility over strength any day. There was a time when I was all about strength, bench pressing 350 pounds, working out four or five times a week, protein shakes and just everything. Now that I'm closer to 60 than I am to 50, I'm glad I did all that. But now it's time to kind of like trim down, uh, be healthy from the inside. I always looked healthy. And if, if you saw me with a bathing suit on, you'd think like, hey, this guy looks pretty decent. It's not what's on the outside, it's what's on the inside. It's, it's about your blood, it's about your heart, it's about your organs. And I'm telling you this as I smoke a cigar. That's the funny thing about it. I keep that... That ash goes for about maybe a half to three quarters of an inch, and then I'll flick it off. I have a light here. I wonder if that light will help. There we go. Brighten it up a little bit. There we go. Just your basic fedora tonight. Fits like a glove, man. I'm, I'm a hat guy, and I love my hats. And if you remember a bazillion videos ago, I said that if you can if you can grow a beard you can probably pull off wearing any hat you want i wear a top hat and a derby sometimes and no one no one thinks like you know hey man it's not halloween yet it just it works when my beard was shorter i'm wearing bow ties and vests texas ties very old west I hate to say steampunk because that's a trend that's gonna that's probably already gone. I was I guess I was dressing like that long before anyone coined the phrase. Prior to my beard days, it was slicked back hair and bowling shirts and just kind of like the mobster look. That's all. Typical Italian stuff. El Dorado. I first discovered El Dorado in St. Martin. I wanted some sipping rum. Bartender says, do you want 7, 14, or 21 year aged? I said, heck man, give me the 21. He went down about 10 feet down the bar, cracked open a bottle of El Dorado 21 year aged rum. When he opened up the bottle, I smelled it from where I was, 10 feet away. It was like, like butterscotch on steroids. It was magnificent. Put in a little snifter and 
you don't mix a drink like that. You just kind of swish it around in a glass. You smell it. You taste it. You take tiny, tiny sips. I enjoyed it. Ever since then, I got hooked. I loved it. That was about 10 years ago. One of my pipe options tonight is a cobbit. A corn cob pipe that a hobbit <laughs> would smoke. I would call this like a mini church warden from Missouri Meerschaum. I smoke only one pipe tobacco in this, and that's um, early morning pipe. That's it. It's the only one that I smoke. It's called early morning pipe. I love it. I look like a freaking hobbit, don't I? I mean, or like Gandalf or something. But that'll be for later. A couple things I want to talk to you about tonight on Beards Without Borders. I just, I wrote a couple things down. I don't want to talk about the people that worked for me. Let me put on my glasses so I can sound intelligent here. I'm getting new glasses soon. Frameless, rimless glasses. Silver. Or silver uh, aviators, I'm not sure, with a very, very light blue tint. People that worked for me over the years, and I had another career before I was in the hair business, and I've always gone to the top and never everything I've done, and I encourage you to do the same thing. Search for the career ladder. You either have goals, uh, a Mount Olympus in your future, or someone's going to use you to achieve their Mount Olympus, so keep that in mind. The people that work for me, and with me, they will tell you that it was probably some of the hardest time of their life. Some will tell you that it was some of the most fun that they ever had in their life. And some will tell you it was the most inspiring time of their life. And all of that was based on one simple principle. People don't want to be managed. They want to be led. Nobody wants to be corralled like an animal. Nobody wants to be managed. They want to be led. Wouldn't you rather have a leader than a manager? If you have people that work for you, inspire them, lead them. That could make all the difference in productivity and bottom line profits. People don't want to be managed, they want to be led. As a matter of fact, I've always thought this, that people are silently begging to be led. What, if you cut through the chatter in the workplace, what people are really saying is they're crying out, they're saying, lead me, man, lead me. Take me to the top of the mountain. Now, sometimes these are the roles that I take. Sometimes I'm behind you, pushing you, and I'm doing this with you as well. Sometimes I'm in front of you, pulling you along and many times I'm alongside of you. So it all depends what you need at the time and me as a leader, as a role model, uh, as your supervisor, as your company owner. What role do you play in dealing with the people that work for you? The other thing is this, that if there is a, a leadership vacuum in your company, then assume that role take the role of leader because it will be noticed it will be noticed climb the ladder get there a little bit early stay a little bit late walk 25 percent faster dress a little bit nicer press your clothes if you have the kind of job where you have to press clothes people are always looking for a leader to motivate them to drive them to be more productive because the need for productivity is inside each of us each and every one of us. I've always said the three leading causes of death are doctors, retirement, and stupidity. Doctors in the sense that they don't want to get to the root cause of something. For instance, it's been recently discovered that I have high blood pressure. I don't know if it's, I just don't know what it's from yet at this point. And I'm at a juncture where I could take medication or I can lose weight and exercise more and bring it down. 
and many doctors are so quick to prescribe medications. And I'm not anti-medicine, I'm not anti-doctor. I'm just trying to be practical here. I don't want to be dependent on chemicals. So the other thing is retirement. People live an average of seven years after they retire from work. Why do you think that is? It's because they have nowhere to go. They're no longer productive. And I'm not talking about puttering around in the garage. I'm talking about actually producing something and having to be somewhere, having expectations of you. That's important. I remember hearing an interview of an architect that was still working at 100 years old, and someone said to him, what's the secret to longevity? You still come to work every single day? And his funny 100-year-old centenarian type of way said, don't die. How you don't die unless you have a disease and you're suffering from something, and I'm with you on that because I, I have a, an ailment or two, so I have uh, some limitations as well. So I'm not being insensitive in that way. You don't have time to die. You hear me? You don't have time to die. Pick yourself up, man. Dust yourself off. I don't care. Listen, I don't care if you're an old guy. I don't care if you're a young guy. Life is short. Listen to the guy with gray hair. He knows he doesn't have a lot of years left. And he knows what he's talking about. Third cause of death. Stupidity. Hey, I'll use this box or this chair to reach up on the shelf and get that thing that I need rather than a stepladder. Duh! Okay, you slip, fall, crack your head. All right, doctors, retirement, stupidity, the three leading causes of death. When I went back to my years of leadership, going to work, going to a place and actually leading people, I would have a huddle every day. It wasn't a it wasn't morning meeting where people are like falling asleep. Now, of course, when I was in that world there was no such thing as smartphones there was no such thing as checking your email or texting or anything like that i it just didn't exist it wasn't even around it was prior to that technology but i would have a morning huddle everyone standing up around a bar like a chest high table and we would talk about the needs of the day and if we needed a quick huddle in the middle of the day we did it Rather than have a morning meeting, or you know when you go to meeting, if you work in an office environment, a corporate environment, which I friggin' hate, the meetings are the biggest friggin' waste of time. What gets accomplished in meetings? Not a heck of a lot. So I go back and I look at, it wasn't me that made people be productive. I opened up an opportunity for them be, to be productive. Within every single person is the need to produce something. Keep that in mind. You want to hear an old English proverb? You ready for this? Fear knocked on the door, faith answered, no one was there. Fear knocked on the door, faith answered, no one was there. Approach your life with faith. If you ever want to know more about that, shoot me an email. Oh, speaking of emails, I had, I had no idea, absolutely no idea. I'll be honest with you, at about 5,000 and growing subscribers, and it's it's growing quick, it's not going to be very long before I have 10,000. I, I don't even know what the people do who have 150,000. Do they just ignore everybody? But I have such interactive content. This isn't like the pimple-popping doctor. I'm giving content out, and it's interactive. I literally spend an hour a day answering emails, texts, responding to the comments down below this video. I, I'm always doing that. And it's getting to the point where, and I still work 
a full-time job and a part-time job. My full-time job exists of four, four 10-hour days. My part-time job is I teach as well. And then my other part-time job is building YouTube content. So my goal is to be able to spend maybe an hour or two interacting with you personally. And uh, right now, it's eating into my day, so I'm, I'm kind of falling behind on it. I just, I didn't plan, I did not expect this to go over as well as it is, and I'm really happy that it is. I might be going to the uh, National Beard and Mustache Championship in Nashville on September 3rd. I wrote them and I requested that I be a judge. I'm not going to enter as a contestant. I want to be a judge as a world-class hairstylist, as a guy who is one of the world's most sought-after beardsmiths. I thought, you know what? I think I finally earned the right to do that. So if they want me, that would be fantastic. And if they do, then we'll get together and we'll have a cigar, a pipe, and an adult beverage. Okay, so me you'll meet me in Nashville on September 3rd if I'm going to be a judge there. Always got to have the water. Hey, can we stop and uh, I give you a peace be with you blessing? How's that sound? Peace be with you. And the proper response is always, and also with you. I can't even begin to tell you how enjoyable this is. See, it's a, it's a shorty. It wasn't even as big as my finger and flat. See how flat it is? Compared to a uh, Zippo lighter, take a look. Can you see, just for scale purposes? Actually, this is Rolling Thunder Tires. I love this. This thing's old as dirt, man. Peace be with you. Doesn't matter where you are in the world, because this is an international audience. You know what peace is. My peace comes from within me, from God in me, my faith, my Christian faith. I don't push it on anybody. If anything, I try to live it out. I don't want you to know that I'm a, a Christian man of faith because I tell you so. I want you to kind of come to that conclusion by my actions. I'm a guy that stops and helps you with your flat tire. I'm the guy that uh, gives you a hand when you need it. Socrates said, the unexamined life is not worth living. Pretty interesting, isn't it, from a Greek philosopher? Look at your life. What's it all about? I love this line from Dan Kennedy. He says, if you don't place a high value on your time, you can bet that no one else will either. Eliminate the time wasters from your life. Cut them off. You could still be friends, but you don't have to let them waste your time. That's important. Beards without borders, man. Are you in a war-torn land right now? Are you uh, socioeconomically uh, struggling at this point? Do you want to work your way up the ladder? You can do it. You need to look for examples of people like you who did it. That's important. It doesn't happen overnight. You don't wake up successful. It has to be part of your plan, a bigger goal. If you don't plan your future, there's always someone else who's happy to include you in their plan. Keep that in mind. Do you want to have your own plan? Or do you want to be a cog in someone else's wheel? 
helping them be successful. Did you ever notice that the person you work for always drives a nicer car? There's a reason for that. You don't have to despise the people you work for. You can be there too. I'm always careful when the cigars get down this little, especially when I have this beard. And with uh, the oil and wax in it, I have a funny feeling that if it was ignited, it would just be like whoosh, just like a big, big flame. It would go up really fast, and that wouldn't be good. That's what I call hitting the reset button. All right, this is done. It's nice. I think I'm gonna do an English blend. My little zipper pouch here with my Cobbett. Loading it. I'm only gonna load it halfway tonight. Hey, you wanna see something really neat? This is a pipe tool from Revlon, the same company that makes tweezers and nail clippers and makeup. It's old. This thing goes back to the 50s, man. Look at that. Looks like a little uh, pocket knife. Okay. It's got your tamper. Boom. A little pick. And then it's got a little blade on it for cutting flake tobacco. I love it. I've never seen one like it ever in my whole life. And because of that, it's worth a lot to me. More uh, sentimental value than anything else. All right, so this is a Cobbett. A lot of crazy stuff going on in the world, but not in your heart, right? Maybe in your head, but in your heart, you're at peace. You are, you're at peace. Beautiful man. That's called the charring light. The tobacco swells and rises a little bit. Tap it back down. Fire it up again. Perfect. Absolutely perfect. So the marula oil is in the beard today. Keeps it nice and soft, contained. It's not, literally, my beard could come out to here like this. But I, I bring it in. Fluffy Beard Friday is just kind of like when I blow dry it and let it be big. This is, I learned to love this pipe last summer. Love this thing, you have to get it, it's a Cobbett if you're into pipes. Smoke's cool, that the hot smoke travels a long way, so it's cool by the time it reaches your palate. Now, two more months, I'm gonna reach one year. So here we are, July 11th. My one year, my year is going to be uh, September 7th. Third is the Nashville trip, if I decide to go, and if they want me to be a judge. If not, then I probably won't go. But I'll be there in spirit, beard spirit. If I get up a chance to get on the mic. You know what I'm going to say, right? Rise and shine, mothers and brothers, and cheese wedges and chin straps and handlebars all over the world.
I can't belt that out right now. I'm too tired. I have three days off from cutting hair. I work Wednesday through Saturday. Sunday is my day of rest, getting a couple things done around the house. Church, worship, rest. Just rest the body, let the body rest. Today I worked all day. Tomorrow I have a doctor appointment in the morning, and then I work the rest of the day. Roommates coming home. Housemates coming home for, uh, for the day, probably stay overnight. Then she'll probably head back down to the Jersey Shore. I love living alone. <clears throat> Believe me, I love it. It's going to happen real soon. Unless I meet a, a wonderful woman who uh, can appreciate a man who likes his quiet time. And I like a woman who likes her quiet time, too. I'm not into, like, smothering each other, just always being around one another. I remember when I was married, my office was in the basement and had a walkout basement. I could see the backyard. My wife had a craft room where she made jewelry up on the third floor of the house, and we were apart. <laughs> I was here, she was up there. We'd come together for dinner, take motorcycle rides. I remember one time I had a scooter she was on the back, and I'm flying down a road. Got a little bit of a, a little bit of a hill, going about 50 miles an hour. It's a 125 cc Honda Aero scooter. Love it. Two stroke, fast man. Peppy, peppy. In Pennsylvania, you got these weird bridges that are just like humps in the road, where a little stream is underneath. Man, we hit that hump, and we were airborne, four to five feet in the air. Came down, landed. It was like it was like going off a jump. <sighs> Scared the daylights out of her. Luckily, I controlled the thing and we didn't crash. I was looking at cars today. I need a new car. Sooner or later. And I'm looking at motorcycles and scooters again. I'm not sure what I'm going to get. I'm thinking I'm going to maybe get a Vespa first because I enjoy Vespas for around town stuff. And I want to... Um, I was looking at Indian motorcycles. I don't know. Do you know anything about Indian cycles? I love the look of an Indian. Big V-twin. Love them. Love them. Looking at a new uh, ink artist, tattoo artist, who I found some uh, designs that I want.